okay, first thing, what is a GNUSTEP application project? The GNUS application project, you see the URL, get non gnu.org. It's a reasonably old project, because it's been around since 2002. Currently, it's under the process of being transitioned to a full GNU project after, after the question of Richard Kleinman himself. So he wrote me and I called it that. He requested this. And we are making, we are sorting things out. Probably we will split up the project in two and decide which part go into a full blown GNU project and which will remain non GNU, which still means it's open source project, it's just not under the GNU umbrella. And probably we need to change the name. You can find us sometimes on our own IRC channel, which is GAP. Just because we didn't like the noise on the Gnustep channel. Now the Gnustep channel is so silent that <laughs> we don't have the noise problem anymore. But <laughs> it's useful because people sometimes expect to ask questions and if they find us an hour, they return to fly. Calling said, the goal of the Gnustep application project is to fill the gap which Gnustep has of lack of applications. Because GNUSTEP has many users, so it's a, such an ex extensive framework. Some people just use to develop for it and target a specific platform, but actually, since it's an open step child, the goal of it is to have a complete desktop environment with it. Since this is not the explicit goal of the GNUSTEP itself, which provides the GNUSTEP project, which provides the main libraries and a couple of useful applications and developer tools, the rest needs to be supplied by other ones. Since picking around applications from different projects is always a mess and confusing for users because you never know where to get things, projects started to cut up and give a consistent environment. I don't know if we are the oldest or if Backbone is older than us. I just know that Backbone is somehow small and so on. Like it's all the packages that you get. Yes. Officially, it's not, it's not there if you ask them. But they didn't release something for two years ago. So, essentially, you can express that the Gnustep plus GAP gives you our workspace. A bit are missing, we don't have a window manager and some tools are missing, but you should have a fairly usable environment. What's in GAP? The, the project originally started as a porting repository. So Gregory John Casamento, which is currently the Knuste maintainer and project leader, he had the idea we would look for open step code and port it to Knuste. Theoretically it's just like compiling, no, it's not that way, but what we discovered is that open source wasn't around then, it was not well known, so there is no more source of many of the three open step applications which is sad. Some source code is lying around, but the authors are not willing to give it away. So we, we know a couple of applications which we do want and which we don't get. Because the authors say, oh, the code is messy, I don't want to release it. Uh, no way, we have it many times, just give it to us and we clean it up, no way. And finally, so this project is a bit on a dead end, so if some, something comes up, we will do it, but Currently, it has been like, of course, the applications we will have, like Time Monitor, which is a CPU monitor, has been ported, it's maintained, so. Now we have a, the Macintosh, the Cocoa, so there can be applications coming from that side. Sometimes there are abandoned projects for Mac, like not maintained anymore, we can just rescue them, port them. So this is other point here, rescued by other projects. Sometimes the people start a project, code a bit, and then it remains there. This is typical of open source, we have many examples. Sometimes these applications are fine, or we even depend on them, and you don't have a place to, to download them, nobody even patches them for, for example, trivial 
API changes we have in GNU-step. So uh, essentially, it's a bit long, and which is a very it's a pity. So we try to cut them here, and we have a couple of them, and we we at least maintain them functional and improve when we can. So this is I think important for the end user experience because that one place can download them, and the applications especially written. So when we write a new application, we will put in here. I myself have not started any extra project anymore. Everything which I do write, I put it in GAP. So what's been outside for historical reasons with them there. Application, utilities, frameworks, everything which is needed. The goal is not to make something which has a lot of kits where we depend on, so you essentially need to install the whole project, which is a bit what it required us. Uh, we try to be more lightweight. This is maybe not so exciting. We don't have so many extra features, but the idea is that GNU-step actually has enough feature API features that you can write complete application. If we need a library, we will put it here so for completeness. Key people. Gregory John Casamento needs to be mentioned because he is the founder and the project leader, so he needs to know putting his he's in the space and putting country here. Yeah. So ten us. And he would be quite disappointed with his body. <laughs> 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 then it's me, Ricardo Mopola, and the co leader. And I wrote most of the new applications because Greg is more like in supporting, and I am about original application, which is like Vespucci, FTP, database, and battery monitor, and other tools. Then there is Adam Fedor, which is a former NUSET project leader and a gifted programmer. He's a quiet person. But he actually maintains picture frame, which is a very nice and cute application. The other people, some are past committers, which disappeared into nothing. Some are not very active. They can be code, can be pilot, and disappear for six months. And of course, all the original authors, which I don't mention here, they are the authors. Not a long list of active developers. Let's start with the first application, the Pana Magica. It's an image viewer tool. It was inspired by XV. So you just open, you can open images. You have a list of images you can click. See them in a single window. So if you have a list of images, like make a slideshow in a window, or you can make a full screen. And it's currently, as far as I know, the only full screen application in GNU Step, which display images. And it works both on the Mac and on GNU Step because the main goal we defined about one year ago is to try to port every application both on Mac and on GNU Step. It's a demonstration that we can do that. So if it's possible, if it makes sense, if it's not of course a system dependent application, we will do that. And this one works, even the full screen port works on both. Come in. Come in, come <laughs> in. We should have a screenshot here, but since we can see some of this application live after us. It's also a reference for people, for example, wanting to do street code and scaling code. It should be a lightweight tool, so nothing special. And there's an FTP application. The interface is pretty standard. It's a two-plane local and remote host. It tries to implement the complete FTP specification, which is rarely found in modern FTP clients. It has both active, passive, and default modes. If you ever need them, they do work. And the special note here it has been ported both to the Macintosh and to Windows. At one point, I rewrote the whole core socket code so that it can work with Windows socket. Because the, I used plain Unix way to do it and it was just not working correctly on Windows. Even if it should, uh, it, it didn't work. Mm -hmm. No way. Now it works, it has some if devs, but this application actually works on the Mac. On Linux, Unix, Solaris, and Windows. This is a major demonstration of the power of for it. It may not be perfect, but it's it's a useful tool, and actually, I think they only maintained the FTP application that we used. There were others, but where they are now, I don't know. 
I use it really, I use it daily, so for what I use it works, it has still has some short comments. This is a pretty nice occasion. We, we are playing with that for the, yes, before the beginning. It's a it's a vector graph, it's application. We need to play with the original author, which is Enrico Sensale. So very prolific Muslim author, he wrote the whole mod space. System preferences and other utilities. And he started this application like eight years ago, something like that. I think it's from 2000. It was called GDO. It was written when Gnustek was still limited. It, has, it was very open step specific, it was a code, and the application just remained in beta for eight years and nobody ever updated that again. It, didn't, it wasn't even completely functional with the updated Gnustek. I completely reflected the code, so it has a current class hierarchy. It's, it's clean now, you can extend it. All the comments were rewritten using the Zier path, so it can also work on Coco because Coco doesn't have display post it anymore. So this is now portable code, the performance is good. Nice. It still makes several tools, it means that for example you can draw circles because what's in there it was available originally, so I did not yet extend it. I made it work. Not the code, I made the box work. This was to make the box work in a clean way, I need to restrict all the editors. You can say the format is compatible with the old format, even if I don't think there are many files around. But yeah. It works, you can print. It's a document oriented application. I think it's a nice application with a reasonable potential. It still needs some work. It's not official now, they so don't have made yet a release of the new version. This is inner space. This is a Gregory's personal toy. This is backspace implementation. So essentially, you have a screensaver running on your desktop. Oh. Maybe it's not very useful, but it's nice. It was a, a, a GT uh, open set application, and it's now here on GNU's that You can animate backdrops, and the modules are compatible. The original version for the right couple of modules. Not all are included because not every module has a has after a license because people drop them in open source without giving it an open source license, so we can't include them here. And this is one of the problems when we might integrate to our new project. Probably we need to take them out or leave them somewhere else. Of course, it's easy to write new ones. Picture frame is uh, Adam's creature. It's called picture frame because the ultimate goal is to make a digital picture frame. So he takes a screen, uses a, an old laptop, ma made a nice one up for the player, <laughs> and it looks very nice. On on their website, there are pictures of it actually walking. This is a screenshot. And he did some nice blending code. It uses iPad channel and it can display additional information like how time when it shoots the picture, the weather. It's of course intended to run an attendant as a kiosk. This is a calculator. It uses, of course, a reverse Polish notation because this is what I use. HP calculators are just superior and I needed one. <laughs> <laughs> and I was solely knuckling a, a real scientific calculator. It's not been released under this name, but you could look for it with its old name, which is RPN Kite or something like that. It's the same code, I just changed the license from BSD to GPF because somebody asked that. I think it was Gregory, he has a little of everything which is good, so it's a PSD is too permissive. I like this, you know, no big issue. It has a couple of short comments, not in much, as much in the Mac version, but in the Bluestep version, but it's a really, really minor thing. So this is saying, there's only 
all the countries to war. There is only one thing which bugs me, but I don't want to speak on it here. If there is a mathematician, we can have a discussion on how to implement the exponential function for non integer numbers. <laughs> but I don't think it's interesting. It's just a personal. <laughs> This is maybe the most discussed application lately. Unfortunately, the nicest thing is the icon because the rest of the code is still underneath. Why? Because it's changing, it's over browser. As we discussed for years, we like to have a native news that browser environment for two reasons. First, because our, our browser is nice to have. Second, because it acts as a testbed for under the underlying HTML framework, mm -hmm. which can be used, of course, outside a browser, because it can be everywhere where you want to display hypertext. In this case, we use SimpleRapid, which is a complete implementation in pure Objective C of the WebKit API from Apple. So it's a complete scratch of the item, which is of course a major, a major goal, but it has many advantages. So the code base is cleaner. It's not Objective-C++, plus plus, so it, it can run from GCC to 95 and up, which means it combines on embedded devices or different platforms. So we can support a much wider audience, including that's more. So it's nice. <coughs> Since it's WebKit compatible on the Mac, you can build the browser. Again, the simple WebKit on Poco or even WebKit itself. So this helps, of course, debugging and you can even display much better pages. The interface is extremely simple. Currently, it just has four button history, but it has bookmarks and it can read and write Safari bookmark from format PDF, which is convenient. Of course, you can use it. There's a screenshot from the new set page. It shows that it's already reasonably working. Not that standard compliant. It's coming up. Not to speak about the browser itself, we can later present a simple web key. Information. Then we have Terminal. Terminal originally is from Backbone, so here we actually made use of the open source concept. We can take other GPA code and put it in a project because essentially Backbone wasn't maintaining it correctly. They did not accept some patches. It was not portable, and so at the end I just put it in. I asked the author many times, and it was just not progressing as we wished, so we made it compile the latest Moonstep Make 2.0 version, which was a major shift in the make price. We added the I personally added code to make it compile on different platforms because it, you, the emulation is based on the Linux kind of emulation. So for Linux machines, it's very convenient because it's extremely compatible, of course, but it used codes which were not available outside of Linux. And I watch a placement for this course, so I can run some Solaris. And I know we have, we have a user which uses it from Solaris. So it has been a long requested function. It's a multi window terminal. It's kind of terminals. It's usable and it works very well. Others framework, which is sadly to say a rescue project because the developer was brilliant, but I think he got busy with other projects. It's an implementation of the address framework of Apple, so API wise is the same, essentially, and it has a front end. You can, so the, the main use is, of course, an address book, but it provides the other services for other applications, and Gnuman uses it. So there is one major application which uses the framework, and this is also most important reason why it needs to be kept up to date because other realignment I think it's very convenient, especially on Android devices. You want to have your yeah. addresses ready. Yeah. 
small utility for laptops, battery monitor, time monitor, remote desk. These are small applications and I'm going to check them in time. Just check the home page. Battery monitor just uses your HDPI to display your battery status and some battery information. Time monitor is a CPU monitor. Remote desk is a front end to air desktop, so if you need to connect to Windows terminal services, what's convenient, whether the parameters, etc. online. Nothing special. Flexi sheet. The support. This is, was an application originally written for Coco, so it's open source available on SourceForge, but the project is all because the author went to stay. We wrote him, we are able to contact him, and we have the Office of Permission to put it in our project. It's PR, so it's fine. It's a Quantrix like spreadsheet implementation. If you know Quantrix, it was a special kind of spreadsheet written for OpenStep. At that time, it was a major. Also, Lotus Info, they had the same concept of two competing spreadsheets. They are, it's an innovative way of looking at spreadsheets. Let's see. Yes, yeah, so you have a screen that is not that clear. It's different from Excel because you can write data sets here in columns and each row is a view of the data set and then you can drag and create different views of the same data. So it, uh, Excel eventually copied that to the pivot table but this one is actually more convenient and the formula are not, formulas are not written inside a cell but they're global for the Spreadsheet. Because so when you drag around and you change the view, essentially you, you have a cube and you're slicing it. So it's a simple way of, of looking at a data cube. Gerald called it a hypercube, multi-dimensional cube. Okay. Yes. Essentially it's a hypercube. And, and the formulas need to work in, on all the phases of a cube. This is why you can put them in a static place. Currently the application is uh, reasonably working on the map, and probably they also left it like in better stage. So what 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 we need to do is clean up the existing code for for bikes, because there are some even on the map. Identify the porting difference between Coco and GNU Step, and either walk them around in the flexi sheet code itself if, if it doesn't count parallels in Coco, or improve GNU Step so that it supports the Coco features. We have a fairly good time, fairly good job because the application started and we can start working again, which was six months ago was unthinkable because not even the window was coming up. We are using complete NIP loading, so we did not rewrite the interface, we did not change the code, so we just add the main file and some NIP devs, but very few. So it's, we had yesterday a presentation about portability. And this is a good example of how you can even write the interface. Eventually, we have to do it to tweak some aspects and some fine tunings, but the general concept works quite well. The, the code itself needs to be made portable because Mac programmers are quite sloppy usually. You have seen it on the other project. It works on the Mac, that's fine. The Mac has one architecture. Now, okay, it has two because it has Intel. At that time, it was just probably the same thing. So the code is absolutely reliant on a specific way the API works, the processor works, the operating system works, and so it needs to be made portable because currently, for example, it works reasonably on Intel, on Linux, but we try on other platforms to make it tweak on things. And at the end, when everything is done, we make a release and we can and when they complete the missing features, because they are missing features, and extend the application. So I think this is a major application which is interesting because there's currently no other, there are currently no other open source alternatives to it. So if somebody is interested in this kind of spreadsheet model. Another product project is Beam. It's, a, it's called a simple work processor. This project is called by uh, Gregory. This is two is a Coco port, we took the last version of B, which runs on 10.4 Mac, and 
fold the code and put it in here. And this is goes in the farther down the road because it doesn't even have a make file. We use directly the uh, PBX grid tool to build the X code. So it's pretty much the extreme way we can do it. Completely Yes. It has an if there's in the code currently, some of them can be removed. And it was a this and flexi sheet really prompted a lot of work, minor and major in most that to be proper compatible mm -hmm. and it's almost usable now, so it's very nice. Uh, there are still some bugs which prevent it from daily usage, some safe problems with the uh, at your bundles, if you have images and text, but it will be worked out. And this tool is handy if you don't want to use text edit or ink, which are <laughs> fairly simple. The screenshot is to the toolbar gets quite used. The menu gets interpreted from the map. Of course, there are separators which make no sense in the yes. but it works. So it's very good. Uh, it, the good thing is if we have the same application on the Mac and on GNU step, which is the core of the GNU application for you to be able to provide this, it's much easier to exchange data and mm -hmm. you may have a Mac uh, laptop and a uh, GNU step workstation or the other way around. And it's easy. We have a couple of games which are written by a gifted programmer and maintain them and they will speak to the biggest games. <laughs> you can just play with games and make it speak to But the future of the most app application project, we have a, a other couple of applications we want to implement that are actually half written currently but not maintained because we ship it to the last project we have like FlexiSheet and Dina and best put you are consuming all our resources yeah. yeah. because it's just so big and also because these applications are not so blocking but it would be nice to have a login mm -hmm. which would be one way to implement it would be to be compatible with X display manager for example so it would be maybe Unix specific so it would throw a nothing looking and we are thinking about an installer for the end user so if you don't want to use your distribution packages, which is one way to do it. We want to have an installer which just takes like the Apple one, but a bit more advanced because it should be able to handle different architectures. So the best thing we have our draft for us is to have a single table which contains, for example, Solaris, Linux, BSD, PowerPC, Intel, and then the installer will install the correct one. Dependency tracking and uninstalling are planned. Apple doesn't have them. We have them. Some people say it's not useful because maybe you want to have an interaction with a distribution installer. It depends. Either use completely that one and don't use the installer, or if you have a clean environment. Theoretically, you can just, if you just have GNU step, you just can use your installing, you install the system and, I mean, how you do on the Mac. So I think it depends on the user. If the user exactly. wants to have a, a GNOME environment or maybe Ubuntu or what. It depends if it's a mixed environment or it's not. It's like if the user decides to use some environment and some packaging tool, maybe you should provide our, our programs for those packages too. Exactly. And somebody who wants to use a pure QSTEP environment can then use the installer. It's not a goal not to provide packages for other distributions and stuff if you want a certain kind of environment. Yeah. Then there's another tool which is an FS config. The idea would be to have a tool to configure and mount an FS point. Just a convenience. Other applications of the same kind flow in the air like System administration tools, which is mentioned here, so 
not not portable application, but which are convenient. So a bunch of tools to administer users, administer your network cards, so things you expect from an environment. A web editor, well, first we make a browser, then we think about the editor, but sometimes it's handy to have a web editor for writing documentation, so something lightweight. We imagine something really lightweight, where you like write FTF to just write your titles. Oh. Not like not a complete CSS, not, no. not a Dreamweaver replacement, yeah. but a handy tool. You to avoid the branding machine. Yes, exactly, because often the goal is to have HTML in widespread use, which is what Apple today is doing. So you have document documentations, uh, program head, notes in HTML, so sometimes what that is tedious. Some people request an instant messaging application. Some people want Java, some people want Microsoft Messenger, Yahoo, ICQ, and you can't name them. There are so many protocols. Even Mac project have paid with that. So the start, they work for a bit, they become incorporated because they depend on some libraries. These libraries are not contained anymore, so there is a new one. It's a moot area and currently people have started working on it. More obvious oriented applications. We have a extended over a spreadsheet, but that's maybe not enough. But writing an office suite is of course a big task. We have a lighthouse application for Sun, we will never get them. That's, some people still dream about that, but that's not going to happen. So maybe that's not pressing, but if new step gets more desktop oriented, that might be a point to work on because I think some some of people expect it. I mean KDE has K Office. In GNOME you have GNOME Office because you have GNUMERIC. Uh, of course there is open office which is alien to everything. Yeah. So everybody has a, his idea about and we'll see. If other developers come in they may bring new ideas on Dictionary tool, this is just the way to there was one under open step. We might think there is an open dictionary format. We were also thinking about something which integrates with Wikipedia for example. Just Something where you can digital website application. You're thinking about the dig digital website application? Yes. Okay. There is already a, diction a translation dictionary by Robert Burns. So there are ideas for being around it's of course neither pressing, neither uh, <coughs> an essential tool, but it's handy. I mean if you have it convenient yeah, to look up the water. That's it, essentially. As far sure. as GAP goes, uh, the schedule had lies on the list, which is an imaging application. We can, I can present that, but uh, given your presence, I can also. I have also a couple of sites on simple web, which might be of more interest if you are interested on the web framework. May I ask some questions? Yes, of course. Okay. <coughs> How about um, licenses? Uh, you said that you changed one project license from BSD to. I can do that because I'm the original author. Yeah, I'm of the course. Author but why, why that? And is it okay to put a um, BSD license project into the gap? Or theoretically, it's okay because Savannah just requires it's an official open source license, which BSD is, but if we have the ability to change license, we prefer GPN and GPL. Okay. That was decided by Gregory and essentially I agree with because it's cleaner that way and it's compatible with GNUSLIP itself. Since we've already had license problems in the past, that it's better to avoid them from the beginning. Next question. What about GNUME app? It looks like it's abandoned. Nothing changed over a long time right now. Do you know what's up with the author? What's, what's the the author is still alive. <laughs> he says he has patches. If you report problems, he has an attitude. It's saying always it's a new step problem. 
which is not always true. So it's a bit of a game. Who, who's, whose fault is it? And I don't like his attitude in this case. It's a brilliant application. I think it's a, one of the most complete applications you have for GNU's app. And I used to use it every day for a long time under Linux. We don't have plans to import that in GAP because okay. we don't have the resources to track another big application. So we, we have plans actually to rewrite the code if currently the whole GUI is hard coded. The whole GUI is hard coded yes. in? So on the Mac, the Mac port uses NIPS and the Newstep port uses hard coding of GUI with several applications to it. Terminal is also completely hard coded because some also like that way. And at the end, we one idea, Gregory, of course, because he's the government terminal that everything should use Chrome. For terminal, we already have the idea to rewrite the interface to use Chrome because it's more maintainable. You can translate it because we are going to provide translations because some people request translations, which is of course correct. And with GROM file, it's easy. Just provide another GROM file in a language model that do that with. Localized pain, you can do it. It's a useless pain. So. Yeah. Yeah. And the same should be done for GNU okay. mail. But the idea is, if we do that, and we send him patches, what will he, he do with these patches? Okay, he's not very responsive to external. Uh, he has actually at the he had provided nightly tables on his yeah, website. Really? So yes, they're not. It's not updated, but it's much better than the last release. Okay. So it has features like red eyes. Uh, I don't know what, why the release never get up. Maybe you should um, poke them a little bit. We do that. Uh, maybe I make myself too or whatever. Yes. Maybe if it's always the same person poking, yeah. the, the whole community should poke it because I know that it has a wider usage. Uh, yeah. I mean, the guy was contacted by Apple to teach. Apple Mail and especially the, the mine thing of country mine to be used by Apple. I don't know if at the end it happened. That speaks about the quality of this mine thing. Okay. He told me that one. Um, it's used by some codec software, the mine, the country mine thing. Yeah, do you? Do you <laughs> yes. But do you plan modernizing the interface of several applications, like adding the uh, those toolbars and stuff like that? Some already have the toolbars, some are incomplete. Yes and no. It, it depends on application. For some applications, definitely, I'm going to definitely update the graphics interface, which is outdated and incomplete. And I want first to make a release like it is, yeah, okay. the original one, and then I plan to change the inspectors and update it to sort of be more. Uh, Coil in the loop, like okay. use color waves, sliders instead of. Do you know um, some, some uh, um, remarks? Do you know Bookmarker, written by Markus Müller? No. It's a small bookmarking application, which. Um, what's the word in it in English? Say it in German. Verwalten. Manage. Oh yeah, which manages your bookmarks and can open bookmarks from from within the application. It's a central book, central place to manage all your bookmarks. And mm -hmm. he ported it to Knuster once, but then he ended up there's no use for it in Knuster because there is there no no, there's no, no Knuster application who opens or sends them sends them URLs. So maybe you should talk to him. We can. I'm He's not around here at first time? He was here yesterday. Okay, we can, small guy. We, we, can we, we can talk to him because I added a, there is an experimental uh, support for services. I hope if you know Mac, you know there are services. And on the Mac, you can already use this future and say open URL into. So it should be easily integratable. And I tried to hack this on GNUSTEP and it works. You have, a, you have a URL in, uh, in mail. You can double click on it currently, but you can select it and say it's open a, it's a full creature bookmark application. Maybe you you could have good use of it. I, I don't know if, if he integrates, for example, with Safari 
I don't know how he does it, but we can talk. I mean, yeah, my feeling is it's compatible with the, the Safari one. Yeah, we, there is the same service. A little bit given up on it too because he has not much time for it, whatever. Maybe you could ask him for if it. If it works on the Mac and it's. Yeah. One of the key words is integration, so the more we integrate, the, the more complete the user experience is. So. Did you look also on other projects from the Mac side, like um, CyberDuck and Colloquy? CyberDuck? CyberDuck is an FTP uh, application. I don't know that one. Maybe I'll show you it later. I remember so the yellow dog. Yellow the rubber duck icon. I remember CyberDog as an open dog web browser. Yeah, yeah. Duck, duck. It's like a, like, a, like the um, Donald Duck. No, the, the only FTP application I know was WIPO, which was interesting, but in some sense is broken by design, and it implemented only passive FTP. So I ended up for that one. Do you know Colloquy? I don't know how it's um, how it's. Um, no, I don't. I, I know it no. exists, but I never used it. And it's a, a, a chat application, and I think that it's why guys use it. Yeah, they they use the, the, it has support for that special protocol they Thai guys use the slick protocol, but it's a cocoa application and it could be maybe it could be ported. Maybe it could be ported. And then the uh, Open Office guys are planning to use Coco for the Mac port. Actually, I know there has been talks about that, but I think we can have a short presentation on the simple web kit. Yes, we can. Just time. This is the core of this Pucci. I said. The goal is to provide a web rendering engine framework. It's part and it's part of Qnu step. So it's it's an official project, it's under the Qnu umbrella. The main author is Nicola Schaller, who is the manager, founder and CEO of Gold Delicious Computers. His main goal is to Target uh, handheld devices. I have his documentation here, business documentation here. He is the importer of these Linux computers. He works on the open more for JAWS and all those small, small and nifty tools. So he needed a small web engine. He's the founder and the main programmer. It's all done for the WorldNet. Then there's me. I'm the tester. I'm the guy who insisted that he put his code open source and new step and I maintain the core to make the main files. And since I use it in this Pucci, at the end I also test the result. I also mentioned Fred Keeper, which is a current GUI maintainer. He did not write a single line of code in simple web bit, but he has been very kind in fixing bugs and completing GUI so that it works. Uh, because the WebKit engine is really taking out the maximum of GNU step GUI because it uses a text active NS text attribute thing inside the text cell to display the whole web page. So it's a, it's an interesting approach. It works. It can work, of course, if there are no bugs. <laughs> can it can it be feature complete in the end? Can it display tables and stuff like that? Theoretically, yes. It can. It's not uh, tables is the most complicated thing, but it's hard working on Mac 10.5. Mac 10.5 has a table which can be embedded in text view. So it, since it can be done, it's just a matter of putting it. Okay, it's not in it's not in Qnuste itself. It's no, not <laughs> yet. Yeah. Okay. So what what the main features? It should be a web compatible drop-in replacement. So the API is exactly the same. And in fact, the demonstration as a Pucci on the Mac can be combined either with the Coco 
WebKit or simple WebKit, just by linking different targets to run and the same application wall. It's not the same binary for the set of reason of how Apple manages frameworks, but it's not a big hassle. Strong points. We are cross-platform, really cross-platform, since GNUSTEP is cross-platform and the code is entirely based on core libraries. We work on GNUSTEP. It works on Coco, so the author continues to check the same code on Coco, GNUSTEP, and MyStep. So we see the differences. What is MyStep? MyStep is like a smaller cousin. It's, an, it's a GNUSTEP environment optimized for very small devices. So it's for handheld time devices. The author is not here to show it. We are tested on many architectures since Newstep works. We have tested on Solaris, on BSD, FreeBSD, OpenBSD, Linux, Linux Faro PC. Some platforms were not so easy. For example, we know that Spark has issues with nil structures and other things. So we work. I don't think WebKit works as well because they don't need to. And Pure Objective C, but it's, I will say it loud again, it's no Objective C plus plus merge because Apple made an aluminium. It combines from GCC to 95 upward. So this makes us extremely portable and having support for other compilers is very convenient for strange architectures. So on Linux we have always 4.1, 4.2, whatever. On other platforms, it's not always the way or their bugs, so it's convenient to support any compiler. In fact, we run on Perl. We are one of the very, very few browsers that run nothing on GNU, Perl, and work. I hope we still work. We worked one month ago, so. <laughs> and just can I mention Solaris 2.5 on Spark? Let's put your hands. Open this, this path where there are very few browsers we run. The footprint is small, so the answer binary is between 1 and 3 megabytes, depends on the processor architecture, of course. If you split it, the size goes down, probably. So, this is probably the heritage from being an embedded uh, framework. Possible uses browsers, both on workstation and handheld. So, the goal is, for example, if you need to browse. But it goes further since it's a web kit, the goals are similar to the web kit itself, so you can have help and documentation viewers which read HTML. And one of the extensions to return to Blue Mail is to support the viewing of HTML mail of HTML mail in mail applications. We have mm. asked Ludovic to look about it because currently the framework is Sometimes it's complete to support at least a simple email and HTML mm. attachment. So the rendering of simple styles and headers uh, is enough. So it would be already a big improvement. And another usage is like kind of this is not implemented. It's on it's my like to-do list because everyone wants it and nobody wants to actually code it. It's it's in my step, so Mister can support it for sure. It's just a matter of writing it a bit differently. Converting HTML to an MTF document. Since we display an NS attributed screen, you can do that conversion and it can be very convenient sometimes. But in the near future, we need to fix some essential issues like line items, tables, there are some bugs. We do have potential for JavaScript support, so our goals are probably much wider than, for example, other embedded and small browsers like Dillo. So, maybe you should also uh, talk to David Chisnell. He's very advanced, but when it comes to uh, runtime, we can language ask features him. and stuff like that. And he implemented several languages and scripting stuff. And maybe he's the right maybe person to talk to. We have a JavaScript interpreter, so. That one is pretty basic, but we can at least pass the syntax much better than other simple browsers. Of course, it's, it's not Mozilla, but Zillow 
facts of pages where we at least don't display anything because we pass part of the page. And another thing is CSS, at least in that style attribute. So complete CSS support is very difficult, but modern HTML, uh, they call standard HTML attributes as CSS inline. And so it's, it's still HTML as far as features go, so the DOM tree you get is very similar, but it's written differently, and right now it's just ignored. So I think that should not be too difficult. And of course, tons of bug fixes. Uh, in the long term roadmap, so where, where do we want to go? It would be nice to have a complete JavaScript support, at least as far as ECMAScript specification goes, which doesn't mean you can do any JavaScript page because that's, there are so many queries and what's around, but at least you know you have some JavaScript you can use for, <coughs> for example, applications like help and most compatible pages at least. CSS 1 and 2 is on the to-do list, but that will be probably the most difficult part. Speed improvements, there can be many. There should be both optimization of the parser and in the way we display things, because since we use a text view, we need to be a bit smart on what we update, otherwise we spread the text view, blow in a rack a bit too much. <coughs> Other bug fixing, I can write it on every page, bug fixing. And the goal of the author, Nicholas, is to have SVG processing because for handheld devices it can be very convenient. I know that not many web pages actually use it, but it's a nice feature, I think, because it's standard. And yeah. if you need to display graphics inside the page, it should be standard. If not, don't know why. That's it. That was simple web kit. And if somebody else is instead interested in price, which was listed on the program, he can ask me personally go to the website. But are there questions? I think I made up my time. Yeah, it turns over. Everybody ask came late. We can see some applications live. What's next on the agenda? Next is um, Quentin in exchange for Nicola, Nicola's Ward, but he did not show up yet. Hmm. <laughs> If we did so not show up, we can, for example, look at Graphos. <coughs> which is a drawing application. Where you can show <coughs> vector drawing using an SPCF path. These are squares, but I think drawn as SPCF path. And of course, for Excel and CFI support. You can do anything. Here we are using the art backend, which just optimizes this kind of graphics. And of course, Okay, if you are really adventurous, we can try to launch with Pucci if we have network connection. We have a project for it.
because of the net and have been being displaced. What do you want more? What do you want? We need to believe it. We can check our test files and see what we can also see the bugs into the shortcomings that have we can we should have here uh, for example we see that the title here is not correctly on the code font, which is a short form with new step. And we have support for quite complete uh, of special charters like umlaut ligatures. Okay. The translation for foreign characters is good and the translation table is quite standard complete, which was a lot of work because there are hundreds of symbols up there within the Unicode and the display. But we see, for example, that the list is mm -hmm. not complete, but it's coming along nice. This is intentional that we can save the bookmarks because we don't have the right to write them. But these questions, otherwise we wait for a point in, perhaps. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.